Hello, this is me Tsarka, and today we are going to model your first low poly scene. Um, I saw a lot of low poly scenes running around on the internet and most of the uh, first kind of scenes are low poly mountains. And I thought that was a bit boring because everybody is doing the same, so why not create a tutorial for all the cool folks out there who want to do something different. So, our first step is short introduction to Blender. This is Blender, but before we can really start with it, we have to download it. So just go on blender.org and just download it, uh, it by clicking this huge button on the screen. And that should work totally fine. Then just run the file and you should get something like this. Um, this is a bit uh, different from what you might see because your background will be dark. Um, don't get confused by that, that's just a small thing I did to my blender to change it, yeah, to look the way I want it to look. So, low poly. Well, first let's get into blender a bit and see how all the things work. First thing I would recommend is move your camera by holding the middle mouse button and just moving the mouse around. You can see that our camera is orbiting the um, center point of the image right now. If you want to move a bit to the left side, you can hit control. By the way, you should see all the keys I'm hitting down here, except control maybe. Oh yes. And just scroll and you should be able to move to the side and when you're orbiting around a point, it's more to the side. So, I mean, that is the main um, kind of control mechanism. You can also zoom in and zoom out by just scrolling. And that is how you navigate in Blender. Um, but have, let's have a look at the interface. You have a lot of different windows here. We have this weird timeline and all these buttons. Don't get confused by that. Um, we will probably learn step by step what all these mean when we start with modeling our cool tiny world. By the way, the idea of um, this um, yeah, small world we want to model is we want to have a small town with a river and maybe a street maybe a small bridge and trees and some crops or something. So we will have that kind of scene. Um, but first of all, we are going to have to step into research. Um, I already found this great image on Google Images. So first thing you should do before you actually start modeling a cool scene. You should search for pictures because you won't be able to memorize everything. Um, if you do, congratulations, you are probably a great artist, but um, I can't. So just search for some pictures and then have a look at them. So what do we see? Um, small villages um, very often have a main street. So we have to do that, obviously. Um, there are a lot of smaller kind of houses next to the street. We have maybe a school. I don't know, this might be the town hall. We have a church back there. We have a big place where yeah, students or other people can play soccer or something. And we have all these um, yeah, fields around the um, village. And we have small lakes. Also interesting is that the um, fields are separated by bushes and trees. So that is a feature we might want to add. And we have obviously some side streets and backyards and those things. So hopefully uh, we can add all those things to our scene. So if you um, load up your first uh, scene in Blender, you should not get this, but a scene with a camera 
and a lamp. Um, I will add um, a lamp to show you what to do with those. Um, first of all, select it by hitting the right mouse button on it and then hit delete to yeah, simply delete it. And do the same thing for the camera so we can start up with a fresh and new scene. After that, we are going to um, add a new camera. You can do that by going to this create tab and then yeah, searching for the camera. What I normally do and what you should learn if you want to do more than a single scene, I hit shift A and then I have the same menu like over there, but way faster. Um, then I'm going to add a camera and this camera is already in the right position um, because we're going to create a so-called isometric scene. Isometric is just a kind of perspective you can have and that is very common for low poly um, yeah, scenes. So we are going to use that. Um, I will hit this small plus button over here with the left mouse and here we have our location and the rotation of our object here. And because I want the rotation of this camera to be 45, 0 and 45 degrees, I just click on this, type in 45, click on this, type in 45 and it should work fine. We have to change another thing for the camera. So over here we have the interface for changing the object, the scene, the world, like almost everything. So go to the camera tab, there's a nice little icon over here and change the kind of perspective to autographic view. That is essentially a projection. So you don't have like lines uh, running to the same center point in the background. So it's a very interesting kind of perspective that is normally used for autographic scenes. So if we want to see what our camera is looking at right now, we can hit numpad zero. And if you're on a Mac or something, you can also hit view down here and hit camera. That should work, work fine. Um, then to, um, okay, um, because I want to move the camera a bit back, I will hit G. G is for moving stuff, so it's not r very good. Yeah, you can't really see it, but you can see that the point on my screen is moving and that is essentially the camera. The camera is white right now, so you can't see it. Um, if you then hit Z, you can only move it in the Z axis. And if you hit Z again, you can move it back and forward. So I'll move it a bit back. And now our camera is perfectly looking at the scene. If the camera isn't big enough, you have to change the autographic scale over here. So I will um, double that from six to 12 to get a nicer kind of, yeah, field or a nicer scene. Um, I want to have a square as the camera. So I went back to the render tab with this photo camera over here and I will type in 1920 as the Y as well, so that it is the same. And then we have a nice squarish kind of image. So next thing we have to do is we have to change uh, this from Blender render to Cycles render. This is really, really important because all the materials and um, yes, essentially the whole image will change if you do that and you should because it will look way better. 
Um, okay. So I will move the camera a bit back, a bit more back again. So hit G double Z so that it doesn't um, yeah, distract us from our main scene.